Xiaomi has made a ton of different devices from e-notes, e-readers, all the way to being the only company of note to make a mini e-book reader to date in the form of the Ink Palm and Ink Palm Plus. So here comes a unique looking and well compiled e-note, the W8 by Xiaomi Moan. Thank you to Xiaomi for sending us this sample. When we said unique, we mean it. It's called the W8 and yet is a 10 inch, not a 9.7, not a 10.3, a 10. Not only that, it features an all new pen we have never seen before, thus expanding the digital stationary market. Furthermore, it's in emerald green with a leather backing, making it the third e-reader ever to have leather incorporated into the actual build. Honestly, this is quite interesting to say the least. It's Android, you can install apps, but what else can it do? Well, let's check it out. As per the brand new engraved in stone slogan by Xiaomi, growing up, getting lucky. Yes, that is their actual slogan. Doesn't translate well for the North American crowd, now does it? So before we get into this, we have to look at the pen. Now, to be honest, this is just the iFlyTech pen, but it is in white and it does have a black tip, so it is offering something a little bit different. It has eraser on the back and a secondary button for eraser and key mapping on the side. The device is so miraculously built. This is amazing. It is emerald green. There's that leather on the back that just goes right to the edge right to the side bezel which then wraps around to the front you have a speaker on the bottom with a USB-C and you also have a power button up top and the pen snaps to the side like this so you won't lose it the magnet is not the strongest but it does snap to the side now looking at the unit itself Looking at the UI, you will see that all the apps are in Chinese. Do not worry, anything you install after the fact will be in English, and the device is in English. Everything from the top drop down and the settings and everything in between. So if you go to device settings, if you go to network, all that stuff is going to be in English, so do not fret. There will be no learning curve when it comes to the languages. Now, there are a various amount of settings. You can scroll through it if you wish. There's nothing too kind of specific to this device. Simple things like install from unknown sources, changing your app information, etc. So just go through that if you want to see any of that. There is gesture support so you can swipe in the bottom up to go home. If you look at this, you have some cards here and you have lists of applications. Everything you install will be in line. If you don't like something, simply long press on it uninstall it, press OK, and away it goes. It will be uninstalled immediately and there won't be any more bloatware. There's things like WeChat, Chinese Kindle, and a bunch of other things like Taobao and Baidu NetDisk. Just get rid of that if you don't want it. Moving over to books because this is a very important part of an ebook reader. Books is obviously critical to the unit's success because it is an ebook reader first, foremost, and only. It will depend on what application you are using. For example, this isn't the screen that's dark. This is actually the application, which is in fact Moon Plus Reader, that has a little bit of a dark influence. You'll see the screen is completely unhindered by that, but this one is utilizing a darker background. But you can change all that and you can install Aldeco or Amazon or Kobo or anything you'd like. You can do highlights, copy, notes, dictionary etc. Everything will be right there for you. It's very clear, it's very concise, and you can change the font, you can change the text, all that fun stuff. Now we will show you this a little bit more in depth when we get into videos, however this does have speed modes. Unfortunately there are only two, so it is basically the HD mode and an A2 mode. Quick refresh and normal refresh. Quick refresh will get rid of a lot of that background stuff you don't need and quicken up the device as you see like that because there's less animations, there's less grayscales, there's just things you don't need have been completely wiped off the face of the earth. You can go back here and you can go over to PDFs. You can open it with various things, PDF editors, a bunch of Chinese installed things, or Moon Plus Reader. And again, it's going to matter what you open it with because it is going to dictate how well it is going to look. Now you see it looks terrible. You can go back here and go to normal refresh and then you get all your contrast back because it gives you the full HD image. It's going to be very slow. It's going to be very sluggish, but it is what it is. Now, because this is a 10 inch and not a 10.3, this is only going to fit A5 paper. 
In fact, technically, because it's not 10.3, it's I think somewhere around B5, but either way, split in hairs. It's very small and a sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper or letter size or A4 will not fit on here. 10 inches is something we do not see. We just never see 10 inch screen sizes. We see 10.2s, 10.1s, 9.7s, everything in between. So it is kind of an odd man out in a way. You can pinch and zoom, although it's not very quick, but you can mitigate that with the speed mode. So the PDF experience is kind of a little bit paltry. It's not too fluid. It's not too quick. And it does seem to just kind of kill the contrast, depending on the app you're using, when you go into a speed mode. However, you do have the ability to comfortably read comic books because comic books kind of look pretty nice on a 10 inch. When you go to a comic book shop, a lot of the times they are around this size. Every time you open something, by the way, it's going to ask you what you want to open it with. We just set things to just once in case we want to change it later, but you can set it to always, etc. So comic books, again, once it's standard in its kind of stasis mode, it looks Okay, and why I say okay and not looks good is because remember this is a fairly large screen with a fairly low PPI rating. This only has 200 PPI, not even 212, 200, not even 207 and we can go all day long because those are the usual things we see, 207, 212, this is 200 PPI so honestly it's kind of blurry. It's not blurry to the point where it's illegible. That's not what's going on here. But it is noticeably less crisp than everything else on the market right now. And that is all going to come into play when you purchase this. Now, granted, this is cheaper than the competition. I think it's only around a $300 price point, which is fairly cheap for a Xiaomi Wacom Android enabled glow light audio unit. That's a lot of things going for it. So you do have to take all of those into consideration when you're making your decision. Now, the most important thing we got to get to that everyone is waiting for is the notebook experience because this is an Android Eno comes with its own pen that has never been used before so here it is now unfortunately right now as of, as of today's date you do not get English on the note taking experience this will change this will absolutely change they have told us they've already updated the top bar and they will subsequently update everything else you can add recordings onto the screen various different ways and you can do different pens you do have eight different pens and you know what completely honest this is a great e-note it feels feels very paper-like. They're using a very coarse factory screen protector that gives you a lot of roughness on the screen. And I must say the eraser is beautiful. It's very, very quick and it works fairly instantly. It's also very pinpoint. This is one of the better erasers we've seen on devices. I have to just point that out. The amount of pens is, is amazing. You have a bunch of things. You have chisel tip, you have highlighter, you have paintbrush, you have pen and it is pressure sensitivity so if you want a thicker bleed hold a long time or if you want these light kind of hair lines you can just kind of make sure your pen is light on the screen unfortunately yes it does have pencil but it does not have tilt so whether you go like that or you go on the side it doesn't actually tilt it just is the how hard you press it basically is how much it dictates how much is going to dust on the screen although it does dust on the screen quite well you have this as well which is a ton of different templates you also have a selector tool you have back you have forward you have undo you have refresh and you have get rid of capacitive although you don't have to worry because even even with five points on the screen two three four five you do have the ability to write with the wacom pen unhindered you also have this down here which gives you a bunch of other options which is basically as we translated it a lot of things like the ability to switch what this button does be it highlight be it note taking and just some other things like page preview add the current page to wallpaper etc all of this will obviously become clear when it goes into English you also have add new page right here and when you do you can add a new page in line and you can start writing out a note Something interesting we've never seen before is split screen, but not horizontal, vertical. This actually splits the screen vertically so you can have your notebook up top and anything else down below and to be completely frank it's pretty quick it does default to Baidu but because we are outside of China we can visit other places but this is awesome because now we can go down here to our Google if we wish to do so 
click OK on there, search the web, search for Google, and still take our notes at the top even while that's loading. So this is a very good split screen. Oh, but guess what? When you go like this and you rotate it, which is automatic, it then goes to left and right. Now I must say it's not very big. This isn't a very big, you know, it's, it's a spec below what you would want to have a split screen on. For example, if I put my phone on the screen, that's about it. You get an inch on either side, not even half an inch on either side, and it's actually shorter than traditional smartphones. So it's not, it is a split screen for all intents and purposes, but it's not exactly that usable just because the overall restrictions in screen real estate. This has got to be the most orange screen we've seen Ever. It is crazy orange. You can, of course, change that with the glow light alteration here, although the hitbox is a little bit small, in which case it's blindingly blue. So you do have to most definitely be very sure you hit around 25 to around 65% because anything outside of that range is a little bit extreme. In fact, even here, it starts to get a little bit pink. You do have to make sure you have this on point or it's going to look awful. Once you do find the threshold, it looks great. Distribution is fine. There's no complaints whatsoever. Other than the slogan that doesn't quite translate into the international world, this is a well-compiled unit. It's built gorgeously, it works well, and it offers everything you're going to need under the sun, like note-taking, audio, and it's from a reputable brand that's been around for quite some time in the e-reader industry and consumer electronics industry in general. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.